Today's Kibuka podcast episode describes how authorities and killers from neighboring districts and sectors would come to Kabgai, where a large number of Tutsis had fled for refuge, with lists of names of Tutsis who would be taken away to be murdered elsewhere. This occurred from early April until the beginning of June when RPA captured the Kabgai refugee camps. During the first week of June 1994, Prime Minister Kambanda tasked Minister Pauline Nyiramasuko with strengthening the civilian self-defense program by increasing Nyiramwe militia by getting 30 young men from each commune, 145 communes in total, to join the training and distribute weapons being imported into the country. June 2nd. 1994, RPF Ingotani troops rescued Tutsis in Kabgai concentration camps. The Kabgai refugees were accommodated in the following houses of the Catholic Church. Kabgai Primary School A, Kabgai Primary School B, Saint Joseph Secondary School, Petit Seminaire Saint Léon, Grand Seminaire de Kabgai, Philosophies Camp, at the Saint Kagwa Center, formerly known as Trafipro, also known as CND, in the catechism schools, at a place called Mjishumba, and at the Kabgai Hospital. Apart from Kagwa Center, CND, the Tutsi refugees were mixed with Hutu refugees from Nyachonga in all other places. There were also soldiers living in the Kabgai Catholic Bishop's residence. Tutsis who had found refuge in Kabgai Cathedral were expelled under the orders of Bishop Taden and Yumva who led Kabgai Catholic Diocese so that the cathedral would not be destroyed. Bishop Tadense and Yumva also ordered that no Tutsis should be killed at the cathedral to avoid polluting the area. This triggered killers to take whoever they wanted to kill outside the cathedral. There are also daily masses inside the cathedral attended by groups of killers who would kill Tutsis after attending the mass. There were so many roadblocks in the road linking Jitarama to Kabgai which served to stop and retain many Tutsis before they could be able to reach the Kabgai refugee camps. The roadblocks were set up at the following locations. In Rujeramigozi, on the road to Mbare, below the priest's cemetery of Kabgai, at the entrance of Essi Kabgai, Ecole de Sciences Infirmières, in front of the Imprimerie de Kabgai, at the entrance of Kabgai Hospital, and on the road to Grand Seminaire de Kabgai. The following dates were marked by severe Tutsi massacres in Kabgai. In the early April 1994, an attack composed of government soldiers attacked École de Sciences Infirmières et si Kabgai, looking for the school matron called Murundi Chantal. The former director of the school was a Hutu woman called Mukandanga Dorote, tried to cover up for Chantal, preventing the killers from taking her away and from raping the other girls who were around. She was shot dead alongside the school matron, Umurundi Chantal, and Chantal's brother, Mogunga Narcisse, who had come for a visit. Chantal and her brother were the children of Mweruka Jean-Baptiste from Nyanza. On April 15, 1994, another attack came at St. Joseph School and spent about five hours screening refugees. The attack took many people, including Ruda Hungarui's wife, a teacher called Justin of Iteka School, and many others. On 8th May 1994, soldiers again went to St. Joseph School with a list of Tutsis to be taken away. On the same day, in the morning, they took 27 Tutsis to the military base in Gitarama and they were beaten the whole day. In the evening, the victims were divided into three teams, some of whom were taken to Murambi of Gitarama. Some to Bjimana and others to Nyabarongo River to be killed. Out of the 27 Tutsis taken from St. Joseph School, only one survived. The victims included Gwichani Nyoni Manuel, who worked in the pedagogical office, history department at the Ministry of Education, Minedic. Gatsinzi Gervais, who was teaching at Asej Karama. Nyoyita André. Nhibjira Guajan Marie Vianney, alias Maso. Hodari and Nyakara Shinyas, who are teachers at College St. Joseph de Kabgai, as well as many other unknown victims. On 24th May 1994, Tutsis were taken from Grand Seminaire de Kabgai, 
Kabga Images Seminary, to be executed in Gimana. The leaders of the Catholic Church in Kabgai had declared that the priests would flee to the Grand Seminaire, but there were Tutsis who had already taken refuge there, as well as Hutu refugees from Kigali and the surrounding areas. In addition, some members of Otabazi government, including Prime Minister Kambanda and Interim President Sindhi Kubgabo, had rooms at the major seminary and they often went there at night. Each ethnic group was given its own side except for the priests who lived together. On the same day, Grand Seminaire de Kaugai was surrounded by civilians and soldiers who arrived at 10 a.m. They took out the refugees and made them sit in the playground. There was a Hutu seminarian called Nemewahizia d'Albert who brought a list of Tutsis whom he called and they were taken away to be killed. Nemewahizi was ordained as priest after the genocide and is now in exile in Belgium. He was sentenced in absentia to 19 years in prison by Gachacha courts. Among the priests and members of other religious orders killed, there were Jesuit brothers Mretezi Fidel, Mugawa Emmanuel, Mian Shongole Martin, and Rusezi Rangabo Teofil. There were also Marist brothers including Gatari Gaspar, Nirinhindi Canisius, and Visengima Ana Fabien. They also took Abenevichi Ranan, called Benin Nakana, Father Nwenshuti Celestin, Father Musonera Calix, and Father Nyiribakwe Vedast, who was teaching at the Grand Seminaire. They also took Kalinda Viater, who was a journalist working with Radio Rwanda. All of them were taken in the presence of Bishop Tadense Ndiyumva, who had come to hold a meeting with refugees, and when he saw that the killers had surrounded the camp, he boarded a car and returned to his residence. On 29th May 1994, another attack took place at St. Joseph's School. The killers had brought a bus to carry Tutsis to Nyabarongo to be killed. Among the captives were Rurangwa Alexis, who was a judge, Rugwagachiga Pridans, who was a businessman in Gorerero, a woman called Mukobga Jana Ejeni, Gasasira Vital, Mukanga Mije Belin, who was a staff member at St. Joseph's School, Utazi Rubanda Leonard, Muchura Wuhoro, who was a son of Gatabazi, Mnyeshuri Jean-Marie Vianney, who was an agronomist, and many others. In May 1994, on a date not known, soldiers took Tutsis, including Isidol, who was a son of Rienzi, Kajango Celestin, Mizeimana Jean Bosco, and many others at the former Trafipro CND to kill them. Also in the same month, an attack was carried out in Kabgai Primary School A by killers from Mushubati who had nicknamed themselves Zulus. They came several times to attack the refugee camps in Kabgai. One of the various attacks in Kabgai refugee camps killed at least six people in the bushes below the center for the disabled children. Two major attacks took place between May and June 1994 at the Petit Seminaire Saint-Léon at the Kabgai Saint-Léon Minor Seminary. The one which took place at the end of May 1994, took the lives of many Tutsis who were selected during a search operation at the center. They were killed in the forest of Gimana and neighboring areas. The second attack was that of the so-called Mushubati Zulus in Herahamne, which targeted Tutsis from Mushubati who had taken refuge in Kabgai and took them away to be executed. The attack of May 30, 1994, crossed all Tutsi hideouts in Kabgai, selected those who were going to be killed, and put them on buses to Ngororero to be killed. The attack was led by killers from Ngororero, who claimed to have counted the bodies of the Tutsi victims and found out that some were missing and hence thought that those missing had fled to Kabgai. That is why they were putting Tutsis from Kabgai camps on buses to Ngororero to kill them, but most of those taken had come from elsewhere. Due to the influx of Tutsis from many parts of the country who had fled to Kabgai, various communes authorities and killers from other prefectures went there with lists of Tutsis who had fled to Kabgai from their communes. The killers took them to other places to be slaughtered. In some cases, Tutsis were given away by Hutu refugees who are living with them, the latter having fled to different areas liberated by the RPF in Hotani. Among the killers, there were gendarmes, soldiers, and some members of the Abatabazi government. Apart from killings, Tutsi women and girls were being raped. Killers would often take them away and bring them back after raping them. 
At one point, the killers fired heavily on the CND refugee camp, killing many people. Hunger and disease caused by pollution, since water supply had been cut, also played a huge role in killing the Tutsis who were taken refuge at Kabgai. The number of corpses around the camp increased, which caused an increase to the stench around the camp. This was unbearable for those around the camp to breathe. The killers decided to change their killing fields. They brought cars to park Tutsis, starting from those who were educated and those who looked rich. Men and young boys were also taken and killed in other locations. Tutsis from Kabgai camps were being killed every day, making it hard to know the exact number of victims. Some of the perpetrators of the Kabgai massacres include Sous-Préfet Ruteje Shamisa Antoine, the Gachacho Court of Gitarama sector sentenced him to life imprisonment. Sous-Préfet Gatera Gaspar, Gachacho Court of Gitarama sector sentenced him to life imprisonment. Gautu Emmanuel Damarere, who was a spy, the Gachacho Court of Jihuma B sector sentenced him to 30 years in prison. Sagautu Thomas, who worked at the immigration agency. Gilbert, who represented CDR party in Gitarama town. Sergeant Major, called Karata. Seminarian, named Abaizia Dalbert, who gave away Tutsi priests to be killed. He now lives in Belgium. Gasirikari, who was a Hutu refugee from Nyachonga and had disguised himself to stay with Tutsis, who had sought refuge at the former Trafipro CND camp, and he's the one who gave them away. Second Lieutenant Musabjimana, Philip, son of Theopist. Major, Nirea Chizimana Anne-Marie, who was sentenced to life imprisonment. Tuisseng de Narcisse, who was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Hachizimana Papias, who was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Nicholas, alias Bob, son of Rupacha Janvier, who was sentenced to 19 years in prison. Rindiro, who was sentenced to 19 years in prison. Nijena Protogen, who was sentenced to 30 years in prison. They were sentenced by various Gachacha courts, including Gatikavisi Gachacha Court. Among the killers from Mushubati, who called themselves Zulus, were Saddam, Mitterrand, Basese Kaza, Tkwajirimana Clement, Protogen, Evod, son of Revoka, Mutabaruka Hassan, two government soldiers, Rashid and Semanyenzi Jean-Claude, Mudiemana, Chimonyo Tarsis, who was a driver, government soldiers who are known by their nicknames of Shitani and Kajisho, who lived in Gitarama camp and were accompanied by civilians called Gicheri, Sanzineza, Vincent, and many others. The capture of Kabgai devastated Kambanda's government and prompted the acceleration of genocide and acquisition of more weapons to fulfill the genocide plan. Kambanda's government decided to continue the massacres of Tutsis and cabinet meetings put a lot of effort into achieving this priority. Minister Porin Nyiramasuoko wrote in her diary that the government meeting of June 1, 1994 approved that the ministers would continue to monitor the execution of genocide through its program called the Autodefense Civile across prefectures. Jitarama was to be monitored by Minister Kalix Tzawoniman. Jisenyi was assigned to two ministers, namely Augustin Jiravatkwari and Jean Dodier Habineza. As for other prefectures, ministers in charge were supposed to monitor the program as usual. In an effort to speed up the Autodefense Civile program, Minister Nyinamasuoko was in charge of monitoring the program in Butare Prefecture. On May 31, 1994, Nyinamasuoko wrote in her diary that she had held meetings in Muyaga, Rusatira, Ruhasha, and Nyabisindu communes. She did not mention those with whom she held the meetings, but highlighted that their discussion focused on the battle. She wrote in her diary that it is impossible to supply food to those who are fighting Thus, they have to eat what they find. Yerema Suhuko went on to describe how the genocide should continue. To search all households, clearing bushes everywhere, cutting down forests, buying warm jackets for people, finding machetes, strengthening the security and finding about 2,000 young people reliable for no more than two days and wearing dried banana leaves as a mark of people with the same determination. Nyiramasuhuko also mentioned the names of the authorities who should lead the search for youth in Wutare to be added to those who are committing genocide in the communes and providing them with agreed-upon materials. Maraba Commune, the former director of Wutare prison called Munyeragwe, was in charge of recruiting 30 young men. Ruhasha Commune, 
30 young men to be recruited by the prosecutor in Butare called Matthias Bushishi. Rusatira Commune, 60 young men to be recruited and the activity to be led by Sylvain Harindinwari, the former head of investigation services in Butare. Mugusa Commune, 60 young men to be recruited and the activity to be led by the prefect, Colonel Alphonse Nezidyayo. Runyinya and Jishamvu Commune, no number had been indicated, but Nina Masuoko wrote that the operation would be led by Sous-Préfet Asiel Simbarikure. The intention to increase the number of Inherahamne throughout the country was widespread because, in Jean Kambanda's diary of 4th June 1994, he had written that in order to defeat the enemy, 30 young men should be recruited from each commune. That's to say, 30 young men multiplied by 145 communes which was equivalent to 4,350 young men. This activity was assigned to Minister Nyirama Suhuko. It was also reported that weapons imported from South Africa would arrive in Rwanda on Monday, the 7th of June, 1994, before noon. Nyirama Suhuko also wrote in her diary that more attention should be paid to Ngoma commune, Butare, to search for people who are hiding in the forest because... Three quarters of the land of the commune consisted of forests. She added that everyone should be responsible for something and that at least five community leaders should be appointed in each cell. She also revealed that the National University of Rwanda would like to receive firearms to prepare for auto defense civile and that the university was ready to provide funds for those guns. The intention to accelerate the genocide of Tutsis by killing those who had not yet been killed on the mentioned dates was also reflected in the diaries of Prime Minister Jacques Kambanda and Augustin Girabatkwari, who was the Minister of Planning, and Karemela Edouard, who was the Minister of Local Administration. Kambanda and Karemela were sentenced to life imprisonment by the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, and Girabatkwari was sentenced to 35 years in prison. On June 1, 1994, Niramasuoko wrote that a government meeting was held to discuss the progress of the war and was informed that the government forces in the 96th Battalion, based in Mvumba, had been defeated and fled to Byumba, continuing to Rwamagana, Chibungo, Bujesera, Nyanza, and many others. Niramasuko noted that the government meeting of June 1, 1994, found that soldiers needed equipment and that they had a problem with RPF accomplices in the military and that there was lack of adequate coordination between military and the government because some of them wanted to negotiate with the enemy on their own. Niramasuko noted that the minister's meeting on June 1, 1994 also discussed the purchase of firearms, ammunition, and other military equipment. She wrote that the government had provided $9 million US million for the purchase of weapons in Egypt. In addition, another $4 million and 200000 US dollars was put aside for the purchase of weapons through a Frenchman called Dominique Lemonnier, followed up by Colonel Bagosora and Lieutenant Kano, Jean Bosco and Engineer Ruhora Hosa. Niramasuko further highlighted that was another two million two hundred thousand US dollars that had been provided for the purchase of weapons for seven months, and that there was hope that those weapons would reach Rwanda. Delivery was guaranteed. Nirema Suhuko also indicated that Karamira was on a mission abroad to buy weapons but that he had not yet returned. From Jean Kambanda's diary, it is clear that June 1, 1994, government meetings decided that the Bank of Kigali should be forced to provide foreign currency to be able to buy those weapons. The issue of where the government would raise the money from was also highlighted by Njirabatkwari in his diary stating that, in a meeting of June 6, 1994, the government decided that the foreign currency in Sonargua should be withdrawn and used for that purpose. In Kambanda's diary entry from the cabinet meeting held on June 4, 1994, it is written that the meeting also discussed the plan to recruit about 1,500 mercenaries to help government forces. In a meeting on June 5, 1994, Prime Minister Kambanda, the Chief of Defense Staff, and the Gendarmerie Chief agreed that as written in Kambanda's diary entry, the mercenaries would be hired from the United States and Belgium. The meeting of June 4, 1994 also confirmed that the city of Jitarama was occupied by RPF Ingotanyi armed forces, 
which is why military prefect Major Okritie Yezu Jean Damasan was appointed to replace Uize Fidel. From the government meeting held on June 6, 1994, Jacques Kambanda's diary entry indicated that a big amount of money had been spent on two contracts to import weapons from China. The first contract consisted of one million and six hundred thousand U.S. dollars, and the other one for two million two hundred thousand U.S. dollars. The meeting also revealed that there was a contract signed by the government of Jean Cambanda with an unspecified Frenchman who was later identified as Dominique Yves Le Monnier, a former businessman and owner of DYL Invest based in Annecy, France. In Cambanda's diary, on the issues discussed in the meeting of June 4, 1994, he noted that his government's image was very bad abroad and that efforts should be made to improve it. Kambanda did not say that the cause of that damage was the killings being carried out by his government, but that was it. Kambanda said that France was ready to help them, but had demanded that him and his government would find evidence that Uganda was providing support to RPF in Hotani, and hence France would use the pretext to justify the aid that they were ready to dispatch to his government. The strategies to ensure provision of communication activities were clearly reflected in the Diary of Njirabatkwari, where it is stated that the government meeting of June 6, 1994, had approved the signing of agreement with three companies from France and the United States specializing in communication. They were supposed to help the government cover up the genocide and approved that the president and the prime minister should take action to explain the struggle that they were involved in, which was the genocide. It was also agreed that President Sindhi Kubgawa Theodore should travel to Addis Ababa, the African Union office, to carry out a so-called lobbying action among African countries and to initiate a media war. Yerevat Kwari also wrote that the cabinet meeting found out that members of the Inheramge militia and the military were not treated equally, which was leading to problems of misunderstandings, and yet there was a need to unite in order to defeat the enemy. The June 6, 1994 meeting also stated that there were accomplices among the armed forces, some of whom were Tutsis. As for the Banyanduga, there were also accomplices due to the problem of North-South regionalism. The issue was also written by Kambanda in his diary, where he said, there was divisionism in the military, but added that the issue of accomplices in the gendarmerie should not be exaggerated. Although Kambanda seemed to undermine the issue of divisionism in the gendarmerie, it was a lie. At various previous meetings, like the one on June 4, 1994, divisions in the gendarmerie were widely discussed. It is clear from Kambanda's diary that during this meeting they also considered replacing General Dindirima and Augustin at the leadership of the gendarmerie and considered the list of candidates who could replace him, but they did not agree on any. Among the candidates discussed were Colonel Nirimanzi, Colonel Rutaisire, Colonel Nihuira Bagabo, and Colonel Guara Kabije. Njirabatkwari wrote, that the June 6, 1994 meeting decided to intensify the functioning of the autodefense civil and that the government would give means to the people to be able to do it and encouraging the displaced people to go back to their homes. To that end, Njirabatkwari wrote that the government had decided to establish a system of autodefense civil in each commune and sector and that ministers would reach out to the population to monitor the day-to-day -day progress of the program instead of ministers' meetings in their offices. Thank you for listening to another episode of Quivoka Podcast. As always, make sure you leave us a review sharing what you like about the podcast and share with others who would be interested in listening.